I know, I know, I know, but hear me out. For starters, Zion Williamson and Brandon Ingram are both a lot better than you think they are. But this New Orleans team also has a great blend of vets, young guys, defense, and shooting. We know this is all contingent on health with the main concern being Zion, but I think the potential and expectations of both Zion and this Pelicans team has been extremely watered down due to his injury issues. I've been waiting on this Zion rant for a long time. Zion is a true game changer and all NBA level guy when he's on the court. He's almost everything he was supposed to be. This man put up an efficient 27-7-4 over 61 games at the age of 20 while shooting pretty much exclusively at the rim while also starting alongside Steven Adams and Eric Bledsoe. A more developed Zion with actual spacing from the likes of CJ McCollum, Brandon Ingram, and Trey Murphy is a sight no one is prepared for. Last season in the 29 games he played, he put up 26-7-5 and five on the best efficiency of his career. I know patience is completely gone in the modern NBA and with the internet Zion feels like old news due to us hearing about him in high school, but Zion has just turned 23 years old. If he can manage his body and play at least 50 to 60 games, I think he'll finally get the chance to show his talent in the playoffs. I feel like Brandon Ingram might be almost as underrated as Zion. I think due to him taking a while to develop and only having played in one playoff series at age 25, B.I. became more or less an afterthought in the grand scheme of young potential in the NBA. But not only is B.I. showing the scoring prowess we all saw coming out of Duke, he has also become a much improved playmaker as well, getting close to 6 assists tonight this year. This is key due to the lack of an elite passer and playmaker in New Orleans, having two guys being him and CJ who are secondary level playmakers aids the absence of a true point guard. I love having a duo of one elite perimeter scorer and one elite interior scorer and I think BI and Zion are slash will be good enough to cause some serious damage with a well fitting quality supporting cast. Speaking of that supporting cast, let's get into it. I really like the Pell's variety of skill sets and experience seen in the bulk of their roster. Let's start with Jonas Valanciunas. While in my personal ideal situation for Zion, I would like more of a stretch big, Jonas is more than capable of stepping out and hitting a three when needed, and Zion has shown he can be insanely effective even with a complete non-shooter at the five. He's a solid all-around starting big man who gives you a little bit of everything and a whole lot of playoff experience. Next up, we got young lockdown defender Herb Jones. Having a versatile wing who can be put on the other team's best perimeter player is crucial to playoff success, especially when three of your five starters aren't anything more than passable defenders at best. Herb really burst onto the scene as a rookie and showed some minimal improvement last season. If Herb can be in the ballpark of being a league average three-point shooter, he is the ideal perimeter defensive piece to slot alongside CJ, BI, and Zion. Herb is great, but the guy on this Pelicans team who might excite me the most has to be Trey Murphy. A lanky 6'9 absolute sniper, Murphy took his scoring from 5 a night his rookie season to 15 a night in 2023. Trigger Trey shot 40.6% from deep last season on a little over 6 attempts a game. The elite shooting trait Trey has will make him at least a high level role player for the next decade, but with his frame and physical gifts I think there's potential for a lot more than that. The last guy I'll discuss in the category of key role players, largely due to the amount of coverage he has received, is Jose Alvarado. The world knows him for his sneaky method of getting steals, but Jose brings a lot more to the table. While Herb Jones is great, having another great perimeter defender who is a bit smaller will bode well for New Orleans. Alvarado's peskiness is also something that does have a real impact on the court. As far as offensively, I don't know how good Alvarado can be honestly, but we have seen large three-point improvement going from 29% to 34% over the past few years on double the volume. If this improvement continues and Jose reaches the 36-38% to 38 range, this could help him stay on the court more as being small and an offensive liability are not a great combination. As for the rest of the young core, former lottery pick Dyson Daniels will hopefully see more opportunity this season. The 6'8 point guard has elite defensive potential but is viewed as a bit of a project. I didn't watch New Orleans too much last season after Zion went down, which I witnessed in front of my eyes by the way. So I'm not going to act like I have the whole book on Daniels, but a pretty recent number 8 overall pick has to be mentioned. The Pels lottery pick this year was Jordan Hawkins out of UConn with the 14th overall pick. Many of us saw him get buckets this March while leading his UConn Huskies to a national title. If there was one thing I would point to this roster and say they were missing it would be shot creation from their bench unit and I think Jordan can fill this role. The elite shooter can go get you a bucket when you need one. 
Having spent two seasons in college, I think Hawkins will be more NBA ready than a guy like a Dyson Daniels, but I don't have crazy expectations for him on a team with three 20 point per game scorers. As for the rest of this roster, I honestly do not have much to say. I think this Pelicans team will be fine with healthy stars, but a depth move definitely wouldn't hurt. I think we finally see this team put it all together this year. Another aspect that you might have not considered is that the bulk of this Pels core is still ascending. Most of everyone outside of CJ and Jonas are 25 and younger, and again, Zion is still only 23 years old. If a guy like Trey Murphy can continue improving as well, I think this Pelicans team will at least be one of the more fun teams to watch. With the amount of talent in the league, it's hard for me to set exact expectations. I think this team should absolutely be a top six seed healthy this year, but at the same time, I think there are arguments to be made for Denver, Memphis, Sacramento, Phoenix, both LA teams, as well as the Warriors and the Dallas Mavericks over the Pelicans. I am really high on Zion though and think he very well may jump into top 10 territory with a semi-healthy regular season and a solid playoff run. And yeah, I mean, again, like we have just a ton, a ton of talent in the league and the Western Conference as well. So, you know, they might not be a super high seed or anything, but I really think this Pelicans team will put it all together this year. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I mean, hopefully Zion can stay healthy, man, again. You know, I, I think part of it was, you know, again, right? Like he's big and, and like a lot of his game centers around him being big. Do I think he could have been doing more to maintain his body? Absolutely. But do I think he wasn't doing anything before? No. And that's kind of the unfortunate part about this is that Zion might just be injury prone. And well, I mean, he he's obviously is injury prone, but you know, it might not be something that can really be fixed again, like playing in 82 or even, you know, playing 60 to 80 games, uh, you know, over a course of what, like eight months, you know, it, it's just not, uh, you know, sustainable for most people, you know? And again, like I, you know, I hope they can figure it out. I think they will be able to, again, we saw him, you know, you know, he played 60 games a couple of years ago. Like he's played, like, it's not like, right. Like, like he's played, he's played games. We know what he is. We know how good he is. But, you know, again, it's all contingent on the health thing. Yeah, the, the only thing I really don't like about this team right now is probably the CJ McCollum contract. Again, I like him fitting, you know, alongside Zion and BI, you know, as like, you know, a perimeter shot creator and score. Like, I like him in the lineup theoretically, but his contract is, uh, you know, I, again, at least, it, you know, I mean, it goes for what I believe he's 35 this year, 33 next year, and then 30 the year after that. At least it's, you know, going down instead of going up. But, you know, that still could be something that handicaps them. I don't really know who else is taking on that contract. But then again, I also don't know what major, major move that New Orleans would really be making right now. So, you know, again, right, I, I think it's just we have to see with this team. We have to see again, right? Like so many of their guys are so young and still improving. I think, you know, we're, again, some people were like, and, and in all honesty, I might have traded, you know, if you were going to trade Zion, I personally would not have given up on Zion yet, but if you were going to, and you could have gotten Scoot Henderson, that I might consider, because again, I'm really high on Scoot personally, but pretty much any other deal is not going to be worth it for Zion, I'm going to be honest. I would have, I, you know, I, I agree with them staying pat. I think it's, you know, way too early to blow this whole thing up. Again, Zion, like, hasn't really, like, if you see a guy with the talent that he has and you're not going to be able to get near the value that you should, again, unless if it was Scoop, but, you know, that, 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 I mean, that's over and done with now. Scoop would be the only one pretty much to where it's, it, I think it might have been worth it to move Zion. But that's going to wrap this one up. If y'all enjoyed it, please like it up and sub to the channel. I'd really, really appreciate it. It helps me out a ton. Comment your thoughts on, you know what I mean, what I'm saying about the Pelicans and any other video ideas down below. You know what I mean? I'm trying to hit most of every team before the season starts, but I also want to make other kinds of videos. So, you know what I mean? Anything, you know what I mean? Just comment that down below. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.